Thanks for tuning in again. This is another point of view video recording of a bridge preparation from tooth number 28 to tooth number 30. Um, I think the angulation is pretty close. It's from a head mounted camera with a 3.5 banged pagasin ocular. Um, it should be pretty accurate. Uh, however, the angulation is slightly different from what I see in my uh, eight power surgical loops. So there are a couple of times when the handpiece or my hand will actually block the view when in reality, through my loops, it's not blocked. Now I'm looking to get a slightly more, slightly high powered ocular for the camera lens so that it's not quite as grainy. There's a little bit of graininess. It's not quite as clear. And then I've got to update some of the white balance settings on the camera to improve that. Some of it gets a little bit washed out, but generally I think it's a good video. So the total elapsed time on the preparation is roughly 10 minutes. There's some edits here that uh, I you won't see. There are some little transitions where there's some uh, fades from one uh, clip to the next um, where I had to change a burr or we had to refill the, the distilled water bottle. Um, but yeah, generally it was about 10 minutes. I usually tell my patients that each tooth... Um, preparation for a crown, assuming a normal situation takes about five minutes. However, sometimes they're a little bit longer depending on the situation. You know, upper second molars can be a little more difficult to get to just because of access. Sometimes the lower posterior teeth can also be a challenge just because of access. Anyway, all that being said, uh, the elapsed time on the preparation was roughly 10 minutes, give or take here or there. Um, and then Immediately after this preparation video, it'll jump right into a screen recording of the bridge design. So this whole appointment, we had allotted three hours for this patient. Uh, the actual time the patient was in the chair was, um, I, think, I think we had the patient in the chair for about 90 minutes at the beginning. And then there was a roughly one hour delay. And then for the cementation after... Maybe it was longer than that. After the uh, patient returned um, from a break, uh, after leaving the office while the machine was milling the bridge and we were firing it in the furnace, um, the cementing took 45 minutes or so, uh, plus a post-op x-ray and some occlusal adjustment. So maybe it was three and a half hours when you total that all up. Um, but at the beginning, you know, if you break it down, 15 minutes of an, uh, anesthesia plus a little bit of prep time. If you get started on the preparation at about the 30 minute mark into the appointment, um, get all the scanning, imaging, designing done at a, at a, by about the first hour, including the preparation, then honestly, you should be able to complete a bridge like this in less than three hours. Um, I usually give my patients an opportunity to leave um, so they're not necessarily sitting there, but I want them to know that they don't have to leave. Some are embarrassed or uncomfortable leaving with a numb face or with you know, their teeth prepped down. So uh, this patient did leave and then came back a little while later. Um, turned out to be a great case. Um, I've got some post-op pictures I'll try to plug in here in a little bit. Um, or post-op x-rays, rather. I In looking at the post-op x-ray, my lead assistant um, missed... Uh, the x-ray that included the entire abutment, uh, anterior abutment. So it's a little bit cut, and then there's some extra cement, which she removed from underneath the pontic space. But the bridge itself uh, looks good. I did not get an intraoral post-op picture. I wish I would have. Maybe on a recall, we can get uh, one from the patient um, on a recall appointment. So uh, great case. I mean, it, pretty straightforward, pretty routine stuff. Um, I usually... Um, do, you know, as much as possible uh, in one appointment. So if the patient has a quadrant of dentistry they need, I have no problem doing a bridge and a couple of crowns or several crowns or root canals. It tends to be a little more effective. Um, there, there is some other work that this patient needs that we may do down the road. Um, but we had opted, whether it was time-wise or financial reasons, to go ahead and focus first on the bridge. So it turned out great. Um, nice opportunity uh, to create a little video for you. Hopefully you'll enjoy the point of view kind of enlightens, you know, allows us to see a little bit more for those of you who may not necessarily spend a lot of time doing dentistry um, or have not had a lot of experience 
in the the clinical side of things, this is an interesting view. So right here you can see some bleeding in the gums. That's fairly common. Uh, you know, I, I like to tell my patients, you know, gums tend to get angry when we're spinning a handpiece at 5,000 revolutions per second down next to them. They don't like that too much. Uh, and that's pretty common. But uh, as you can see later on, a little bit later on, I'll pull out some viscous stats, some aluminum chloride, and scrub it along the gum line. I don't normally use a lot of cord. I don't retract a lot with cord. I haven't used cord in quite a while. Usually I feel like if I prepped the, the tooth, I know generally where the margin is. Um, and so I have no problem uh, going ahead and outlining my own margin. And that begs the question, do you do most of your own crown and bridge design? I really do. I do almost all, if not 100% of my own Ceric design. I've been using Ceric since 2006. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty quick at it compared to the, my dental assistants, and I trust several of them to do the Ceric design, but I'm much, much faster, uh, so I feel like there's value in the time saved uh, overall for me to take three or four minutes designing a crown or five or ten minutes designing a bridge versus them taking 30 minutes designing a crown or an hour designing a bridge. Um, I'd much rather just, you know, do it the way I'm comfortable with. And, you know, uh, dentists generally have a better grasp on some of the occlusal anatomy and, you know, interdigitation of the opposing arches and yada, yada, yada. So I usually do most of my own design work. Here is the Viscostat going in. Like I said, this is aluminum chloride. I generally don't use um, ferrous sulfate. Um, I personally prefer aluminum chloride. The ferrous sulfate tends to clump, and I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, plus, you get some patients that are allergic to sulfa drugs, and I don't want to risk the um, ferrous sulfate causing an allergy for a patient who may not have disclosed that. Um, but yeah, aluminum chloride works really, really well. A good scrub and uh, a rinse, and then you get a pretty darn good margin. Uh, clear margin. Now, if at this point you don't feel confident that you can marginate, then putting some cord in would be a good idea. Uh, I feel pretty comfortable with those margins, especially since I prep them. I know where they are. But like I always tell, you know, the docs I work with and that I try to coach, if you're ever in doubt as to where your margin is, take it a little bit outside. You can always adjust that margin back when you're bonding in or after you bond in. Um, if you're too narrow, I'd rather be too wide than too narrow. So here's the bridge design. You can see we have it set up as a bridge with the anatomic uh, intersection space, uh, in, inter, intersection shape rather. Um, we'll go ahead and image the lower and the upper and then go through the design process. Pretty straightforward stuff. Again, this is an Omnicam. This is a six-year-old Omnicam. Um, pretty clear margins. You know, there's little carries there on the facial at 27. Um, the, one of the nice things about the software 4.5, you can see that dark sh shadow there, um, which turned out to be rock solid. That's just stained from a, an old silver filling, so I stopped removing it when I discovered that was rock solid and not decay. Um, but the 4.5, I'm sorry, the 5.2 software um, really improved the imaging of the Omnicam dramatically. So it allowed, allowed the Omnicam to function a lot better. Um, one of the offices that I'm partnering in has the newer uh, Prime Scan, and I'm still trying to get used to the touchscreen and the trackpad versus the trackball. Um, I, to be honest, I'm not quite a fan of the Prime Scan yet, primarily because of the trackball and the touchscreen. Um, I, granted, I've only used it for a couple of days, but um, I'm so used to having that tactile feel with the track ball that I'm not, I'm not, not 100% sure I'm going to really enjoy the Prime Scan for a while. But like most things, once I'm used to it, I'm sure it'll be fine. So you can see there, I grabbed a, a piece of the patient's napkin when I was imaging and didn't realize it for a minute, so I got to go back and delete that. 
So I'll delete that and then rescan. Anyway, the rest of the design process is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Not a big deal. You can watch the whole imaging process.